it's going to cost you $10,000 to have me speak at your event. But we only have $5,000 and we want you to speak at our event. What's up, everybody? Benji Bruce here, Speaking Lifestyle. What do you do when events try to negotiate with you? Ooh, I just rhymed. Um, what do you do? I mean, events are always trying to negotiate with speakers. Every single time you quote your price, events are like, oh, I'm sorry, uh, our budget is only this much. So what do you do? Like, how do you really stop that? And how do you actually get your full fee, even though events are trying to negotiate with you? I'm going to tell you something that, that I was doing. I mean, I don't know, you can call it brilliance, genius, Einstein level, IQ, whatever, I mean, call me whatever you want, but I'm going to show you exactly what I was doing in these sort of situations. So the, the problem in general is that you'll quote a price, you'll say $10,000, $15,000, whatever, quote a price, and they always, damn near always come in lower, no matter what it is, like every single time. So let's say you quote $10,000, some event be like, I'm sorry, we only have $5,000. Then also the next time you, you quote $5,000 to, to, to another event, they say, oh, I'm sorry, we only have $3,000. And so that's what happens all the time. So how do you get around this? Like, how do you go about doing that? And so um, one of the things that I know a lot of speakers think they can do, they think they can just ask what the budget is. They think that when they're talking with an event, they think they can just say, well, what is your budget for a speaker? There's a couple problems with this. Well, one, no matter what they say, they're always going to lowball it. No one's going to actually tell you what the real budget is. So if the real budget is $10,000, they're going to say, oh, our budget is $7,500. That's, that's what they're going to do. And so, um, like I said, they're, they're not dumb enough to actually tell you their real budget. And so that's one thing. The second thing is if you actually take that full budget, you now come across as a shady ass mofo. They're going to sit there and say, well, we have a budget of 7,500. You say, well, just so happens my fee is 7,500. They're going to be like this shady month. Like that's what they're going to be thinking. Like you're, you're like a used car salesman at this point. And so at that point, when they say 7,500, now you have to go lower than that. Now you have to be like, well, all right, the fee is 6,500. Like you have to go lower than it in order to not come across as a shady mofo. So how do you go around this? Like uh, in terms of, well, one, you're not going to ask what their budget is. You simply don't need to know their budget. You got your fees. You don't really need to know their budget. You just need to look like you're worth what you're asking for to begin with. So that's the first thing. But uh, how do you actually get around this? So Understand that people will always, always, always try to negotiate, especially if you're dealing with, with some Jewish people like me, right? So, I mean, just happens. So people will always try to negotiate. So what's the logical step? Like, think about it. what's the logical step of this? You simply quote high. So let's say your fee is $10,000. You quote $15,000. Like, that's it. You're just like, well, so what do you charge for a 60-minute presentation? $15,000. They say, oh, I'm sorry. Our budget is is only ten thousand dollars. Fine, I'll take it. So it, it, it's something like that. I mean, it's I'll talk about how to do it in a smoother way, but it's something like that. What you do is you quote high. Now I know a lot of people think in terms of negotiation, there's like this negotiation myth of whoever quotes first loses. Whoever whoever says the price first loses. That's a stupid negotiation myth because whoever quotes first, whoever names a thing first, they they set the psychological bar, the psychological barrier. And you can actually do a test with friends. You, you can do like a simple test. So let's say, um, let's say you're around a group of friends. You can say like, hey, all right, hey, everybody, without like pulling out your phones, without Googling, how many, like, what do you think the population of California is? Do you think it's what, 2 million, 3 million? How many people do you think live in California? and lowball it, like do it, do it exactly like that. Like, Hey, how many people do you think live in California? Now what's going to happen? People are going to guess. They're going to say like, well, I think there's 5 million or 7 million. No, there's 6 million. No, there's 10 million. They're, they're going to do that. On the other hand, like go around another group of friends and say like, Hey guys, to do, do the same thing. Hey guys, uh, what do you think the population of California is? Like how many people do you think live there? I mean, you think what 30 million, 40 million, 50 million, how many people at that point, they're going to now stay in that range. They're going to say, well, I mean, uh, probably like 35 million, probably, like, I don't know, maybe I'd say uh, 45 million. They're going to stay in that range. And so that's what happens when you quote first, by the way, the real population in California is like 39 million, 40 million. So that's what happened in terms of, uh, when you say the price first, so that's why you need to always quote first. Like you, you don't need to ask them what their budget is. It doesn't matter what their budget is. You simply say, here's my price. And what you do, once again, let's say you want to normally get $10,000. You simply quote above that. You simply say $15,000. That's what you do. Now, a couple things are going to happen. 
if you quote really high and like, let's say you quote $15,000 and their budget is $2,000. Here's what's going to happen. One, your ass can possibly get ghosted. <laughs> Literally, like you'll quote, and I'll say, you'll never hear from them again. Like you'll just get ghosted. And the reason is because they feel embarrassed. Like they, they feel embarrassed in terms of like, oh, damn, like I didn't know he's at that level, damn. And so they feel embarrassed to even let you know what their budget is. So they, they don't want to come back and say, oh, I'm sorry, our budget is $2,000. Like it, it, it's, it's like, yeah, it's like they just feel embarrassed. So they just ghost your ass. And, and so Nothing wrong with that, to be honest. It's like, um, so so don't really feel bad about that. People just don't respond when you quote a price and they don't respond. More often than not, um, one of two things, they, they don't respond because they, they like their budget is way lower or they don't respond just because they simply asked what your price is out of pure curiosity. They were never going to hire you in the first place. It was just pure curiosity anyways. It's kind of like when, when you're, I don't know, when you go into a store or whatever and you ask someone like, oh, how much is this or something? Like you don't actually plan on buying the thing. It's just like a question you ask. So a lot of people, they do that. So understand that part. When you quote, quote high, then um, what happened is let's say you quote $10,000. So you say it's $10,000. And, and they say like, oh, I'm sorry, um, ah, we, that's not really, uh, I mean, that's more than our budget at that point. So they'll say, ah, I'm sorry, that's more than our budget. That's a good thing when people respond that way. So when they respond that way, that means their budget is probably around that area of $10,000 or whatever you quoted. So what you do is you ask them, this is the moment you ask them, what is your budget? Now, when you ask them at this moment, you don't come across as a used car salesman or anything because you're doing them a favor by saying, well, what is your budget? Maybe I'll lower it. So it's like you're doing them a favor. And, and so it's like you, you can do that in terms of like saying, well, what is your budget? Now, at this point, they're going to say, let's say uh, you quoted $10,000. They say it's, oh, it's 7,500 bucks. Here's what you do. If it's not that far off, you don't immediately accept it. Don't immediately say, all right, I'll accept it. You simply say something like, like, well, I know for sure he can do it at $10,000. Is there a way that you can actually get the full $10,000 and then we'll include the airfare and the hotel? So that's what you do. What you're doing is you're testing them, okay? You're testing what their budget is. And this is just persuasion in general because once again, a lot of people, they're gonna try to negotiate. Remember, they're trying to negotiate. Maybe they do have $10,000 to pay you, but they understand, hey, man, you know what? I'm just gonna negotiate just for the hell of it. Like people, they, they just wanna negotiate. So you say $10,000 and they're like, I'm sorry, that's more than our budget. And that now they're, they've opened up the negotiation. You don't wanna come across like, you need to be a better negotiator. So you say $10,000, I'm sorry, that's more than our budget. What is your budget? Oh, it's 7,500. Okay, well, I know Benji can for sure do it at $10,000. If Is there a way that you can possibly get the extra 2,500 the extra 2,500 and, and then we'll include the airfare and travel. So first do that, test them. If they say, I mean, like, hopefully they'll be like, yeah, okay, I'm, I'm sure we can do it. Now this is actually going to happen more often than not. Like this, this happened more often than you think it will, because once again, people tend to lie about their, what their budget is. You have to remember that people use words to deceive. So don't take everyone at their word. So Whenever someone says that, oh, our budget is 7,500, you test them on that that budget. If they come back and they say, no, I'm sorry, our budget is really just 7,500. At that moment, you can do one of two things. Well, one, decide if you want to do it in the first place. So if you want to do it, then you have to do one of two things. Either one, you take something away, or two, you add something in. So taking something away, meaning, okay, Benji can do it for uh, 7,500, as long as instead of a 60 minute presentation, it's gonna be a 45 minute presentation. So you take time away or you take something away and that's what you do, or you add something in. Okay, Benji can do it for 7,500 as long as you don't mind him recording it. Now you, you were gonna include that anyways, but they didn't know that. So you're like, yeah, Benji can do it for 7,500 as long as you don't mind paying for the flight and hotel. Of course, you were going to ask them to do that anyways. But once again, it's it's one of those things you either take something away or you add something in. And the reason you need to do that is because once again, it's all about how they feel. If if all of a sudden you say the fee is ten thousand dollars, they say, oh, it's more than our budget. Our budget seventy five hundred. And they say, okay, fine, I'll do it. At that moment, they think to themselves, like, damn, this dude was going to like try to charge me extra. What the hell? Like, and, and so. 
basically, once again, you come across as shady if you don't add something or take something away. So that's essentially what, what you're doing um, in, in terms of in, in terms of your, your, your fee and how to negotiate all that sort of stuff. But if you have a problem just negotiating your fee, then what you got to do, what you have to do is you have to increase it and then negotiate from there. So remember, back it all up. Increase your fee. Let's say your fee is normally ten thousand dollars. Increase it to twelve to twelve thousand five hundred. Increase your fee. Okay. Increase it to however much you want, but increase your fee. Then once you quote that fee, people are going to want to negotiate. Hey, that's more than our budget. What is your budget? Oh, it's uh, it's seventy five hundred. Okay. Well, I mean, I know for sure Benji can do it at ten thousand dollars. And, and if you can actually get that money, is there a way that you guys can get that money? Then we can include the airfare and hotel. If there's a way you can do that, then great. And then bam, see what they say. If they're like, no, I'm sorry, our budget really is just 7,500. Okay, fine. He can do it as long as instead of 60 minutes, it's going to be 45 minutes. And as long as you don't mind him recording the presentation, bam, and then you got the gig. And then that's how you really negotiate it. That's how you essentially get your fee despite people trying to negotiate with you and, and how you stop the whole negotiation and all that sort of stuff. And, and you're just like, yeah, that, that, that's how you roll. Just be like, stop negotiating my fee, son. That's what you do. So, all right. By the way, guys, if you like these videos, if you have any questions, make sure you, you ask me, send, send me an email. Uh, info at speakinglifestyle.com or comment on the video. Uh, if you have any questions, you want me to make uh, any videos about specific questions that you have, uh, make sure you subscribe, like all this stuff, all that sort of stuff. So I will see you guys another time.